This is my four channel constant current load, old DIY project, entirely undocumented. But initially, this thing was designed to be run on a 48 volt system where it would test four serialized 12 volt batteries independently. So, this has all four channels entirely separated, no ground connection, no nothing. You could have this at mains voltage and you could have that at ground and it wouldn't explode. And uh, it works by getting power from the device and the test since it was designed for really big batteries. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a couple of milliamps, even a hundred milliamps extra doesn't, doesn't make much of a difference. However, I want to be testing some smaller batteries on it and uh, in order to gain accuracy and to allow it to work at a lower voltage, uh, it needs to have at least about 5 volts supply to work, uh, which uh, the 3.7 volt lithiums I want to test obviously don't supply. Uh, I need to uh, connect up an external power supply. And uh, the boards, uh, there's a board for each channel, uh, has her supports uh, being powered from uh, an external power supply of uh, you know, 6 to 20 ish volts, it's just constrained into a 7805. Uh, but uh, the trade off is that's not. Isolated, so uh, I would either have to run four separate power supplies to maintain isolation, or I would have to uh, sacrifice isolation in order to get external power. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go a route between those two uh, because I've got four switches here which I'm going to put in series uh, with ground on each of these uh, boards uh, and uh, the uh, other end to ground on the case going to this DC plug which uh, would enable you to connect an external plug pack. So essentially I get to, to choose if ground on the board is to be connected to case ground or floating, uh, which in practice means it will be connected to the negative pole of this uh, external power plug or not. Uh, so I'm just going to drill a few holes and uh, then we'll get on to wiring. Alright, so now drilled some holes and made a few switches. As always, nothing is in line or straight, but uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, what's taking up the most time? is wiring everything up and I think I'm done. So, uh, what we have here is uh, we've got uh, four grade leads, uh, one going to the ground terminal of each of these boards and uh, the red leads going to the uh, positive terminals and as you can see the red leads are just daisy chained uh, all between the boards because uh, they're diode ord so it's no current's going to flow anyway between there as long as the grounds aren't connected. Uh, and uh, the red leads uh, goes uh, straight to uh, the supplies I made on the uh, fan power input because giant fans need power supply. And uh, the grey leads just uh, go through the switches into this tiny little thin wire and uh, I just tacked it onto the ground terminal of a DC plug van which isn't actually connected to anything since we're using the fan post supply. So, uh, this should now work. I should be able to feed 12 volts in there and uh, if I flick these the board should pair up. So, let's give it a go. Uh, we're using this uh, rather dicky paper bar since the fancy one is broken. But, uh, we'll make do. 9.5 volts should be enough. Let's see what happens. And all four boards are powered up. And all four boards can be powered off. Excellent. Do the fans still work? Yes, but they're drawing too much current. There we go. Perfect. And we're making it up to the computer and programmed in a 1 amp draw. So let's see. Fingers crossed. Drawing an amp. Absolutely perfect. Nothing to complain about. This thing's done and ready to test some lithiums. Now the big question is can we still use this as in its original application despite having this 
uh, circuit installed and hadn't the positive input of all the different boards connected together despite the fact that they're supposed to be electrically isolated. Well, there's only one way to find out. As you can see, we've got two 12 volt batteries connected up entirely separately to two of the channels and they are paid up, blinking just fine. So, if my theory holds true, connecting this jumper across so that we get a, a 12 volt midpoint between these two channels uh, shouldn't make it blow up. So, hey, there's nothing. And there's no smoke. It's worked just fine. So how come we can have the positive input of all the different boards connected together and not have them be at the same electrical potential? How come we can have the positive input of this board be at a different potential than this board without, you know, current flowing? I mean, they're connected together. Well, the trick is in the input implementation of these boards. You see, in the normal configuration, they are powered from the device under test, in this case a battery, through a diode powering all the stuff. However, uh, for flexibility, there is an, another diode connected up uh, from the positive input, and these two form an OR circuit. So, uh, whichever input has the highest voltage uh, is the one that's going to power the device. But that also has the added effect of there being two anti-series diodes, two diodes with the arrows pointing towards each other, uh, between the two connectors. So if you have a higher voltage on the device under test, it's going to flow into the control board, but it's not going to flow out the positive connection. And the same is reversed. If you have a high voltage from a positive connection, it's going to power the board, but it's not going to flow back out to the device under test. So therefore, connecting all these together, uh, the positive terminals, is not going to cause any current to flow between the boards uh, as long as uh, the diodes are intact. It is only the negative side which matters, because this is uh, has to be hardwired together in this implementation. There is no diode or uh, in order to prevent any kind of current from flowing. And uh, that just leaves us with a rather neat solution for powering all these boards from a wall wolf with single pole switches. Hope that made sense. This is the worst schematic ever. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Now uh, all that's left to do to maintain accuracy is recalibrate it for running on a external power supply. And that one's way off. That's more like it.